In this video here, we are going to make a simulation of jumping off of a cliff into a body of water. So to start, we need to have some initial conditions. So over here, we need to know what our height is going to be in meters. And let's say we're going to jump off of a 10 meter cliff into a body of water. Next, we need to know what our takeoff speed is going to be and that will be in meters per second. And let's say that we are going to take off speed of, let's just say six meters per second. Okay. Now implicit in this, we have to break out and we have to say, well, what is my initial velocity in the x direction going to be? And what is my initial velocity in the y direction going to be? And again, these are going to be in meters per second. And just to make things look a little cleaner, I can take this and I can go up to my font here and I can make that a superscript. And then the same thing in the y direction, I can take that and I can make that into a superscript. And say, okay. Okay, now if I ran straight off the cliff into the water, then my velocity in the x direction would be six and my velocity in the y direction would be zero. Finally, I need to know something about the acceleration, the acceleration in the x direction and the acceleration in the y direction. And these will be in meters per second. Sorry, meters per second squared. And again, if I just want to clean things up a little bit, I can take this and I can make this into a superscript. And my acceleration in the x direction here is going to be zero because we're only interested in what happens when we run off the cliff. And we know that my acceleration in the y direction is going to be a negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, now I'm getting ready to run my simulations. When I run my simulations, the first thing I'm going to need to do is determine my time. And that time is going to be in seconds. And we're going to start at zero. And remember what I said before, you're going to be more accurate if you have a smaller time step. However, that's also more data points that you will end up having to work with. So you kind of want to find a happy medium about what your time is going to be, your time step is going to be. And in this case here, I'm going to make my time step equal to 0 0.01. Next, we have to guess as to how long we need to run our simulation for. In this case here, we're going to guess and we're going to say that we need to run that simulation for three seconds. So I'm going to come up here to my fill. I'm going to come to series. I'm going to change rows to columns. I'm going to change my step value to be 0 0.01 because I said I want to run this at 0 0.01 seconds. And I'm going to have a stop value of 3 or for 3 seconds. And so I'm going to hit OK and then that's automatically going to be populated. Now next I need to put my acceleration in the x direction, which I'm actually just going to copy this here and paste it over here. So I don't have to worry about reformatting it. And then I'm going to do the same thing here for the x. And then the last thing I need to do and put in here is going to be my position in the x direction, which will be in meters. And again, I just like to clean that up. So I'm going to take this here and I'm going to change that to a superscript. Okay, now that I have everything set up, I can actually start to run my simulation. Again, the acceleration in the x direction here is going to be equal to zero. And then I'm going to hit my F4 button to pin this to be zero. And then I'm going to take zero and I'm going to go all the way down.
Now, I know that my initial velocity in the x direction is going to be 6. And I'm going to leave that there for now. Now, if we ignore air resistance, and in this class we will always ignore air resistance, then we know that the velocity in the x direction is going to be constant. And that's because, as you can see here, our acceleration ends up being 0. Now, what we could do is we could end up pinning this value here. And we could take it and we could bring it all the way down because we know those values are constant. But I like to create algorithms that I can use in any situation. So what I'm going to do is I am going to leave that initial value here as being 6. And in fact, let's even undo that pin. And then I'm going to calculate out my velocity the correct way from my acceleration. So I say this is going to be equal to the average of these values right here. And I'm going to multiply that by my change in time. And then I'm going to add back in my previous velocity. Now again, this is a trivial thing because we know that that velocity is going to be constant the whole way down. Next, we have to go to our initial position. Well, our initial position is going to be in the x direction anyway. We're going to say that that's going to be 0. Remember, we're setting our coordinate system up any way we want. So in this case here, we're going to say it's going to be equal to 0. So then I'm going to leave that alone. And now I come down to my next box. And I essentially have to repeat this exact algorithm. And I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to the average of these two values multiplied by my change in time. And then I'm going to add back in my previous position. And then I can take that all the way down. Okay, now one way we can do to check this to see if we're right is that we know that we are running our simulation for three seconds. And we know that the velocity is six meters per second. I forgot to put my equal sign in there. So we know that our x position at the end should be 18 meters. So let's just check that real quick. And we see that, yes, that is indeed the case. So we know we're right there, and we know that we did this correctly. Okay. Next, we have to repeat these same simulations for what's happening in the y direction. So again, I'm going to need my acceleration in the y. I'm going to need my velocity in the y. And then I'm going to need my y position in meters. Clean everything up here. Okay, so we know that my acceleration in the y direction is going to be constant because I'm in free fall. So we can say this is going to be equal to this value here that I end up pinning. And then I can take that all the way down. Next, I'm going to put in my velocity in the y direction, my initial velocity in the y direction, I should say, which in this case here we said was equal to 0. Now, because I do have an acceleration, that means that my velocity will be changing. So that means that I have to account for that. And I have to calculate out the velocity at each time step. So again, I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to the average of these two values, which again is trivial because they're equal to each other. And then I'm going to multiply that by my change in time, way back over here. And I'm going to add back in my previous velocity. 
And again, I can take that all the way down. Now again, for my simulation, I know that my acceleration is negative 9.81. And I know that I'm running my simulation for three seconds. So I should have a final velocity here of negative 29.43. If I go all the way down to the end of my column right here, we'll see that's the case. So that's good. That means that we know that we've done this correctly. So finally, I'm going to do my y position here. And again, I have to start off with my initial position, which if I scroll back here for a second, we know that's going to be equal to my initial height, which is right here. And then again, I'm going to use that same algorithm I used before in order to calculate out my change in position. So we'll say this is going to be equal to the average of these values right here. And I'm going to multiply that by my change in time. And then I'm going to add back in my previous position. Make sure everything looks OK here. We're taking the average of my two velocities. I'm multiplying that by my change in time and adding in my previous position. And then again, I'm going to take that all the way down. Now that we've run our simulation, we have to check if our simulation actually covered all of our time period. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take in my Y position here, and I'm going to go to conditional formatting. And I'm going to do a highlight cell rule, and I'm going to do a highlight any cell that ends up being less than. And I'm going to want that to be filled with anything that ends up being less than zero. Okay, and I'm going to hit OK, and now I'm going to explain why I'm going to highlight anything that's less than zero. Well, remember that we said that we were starting at initial height of 10. Right? That was 10 meters above the water. So that means when we hit the water, we'll be at a Y position of being zero. So we'll see that I started with an initial position here of 10 meters, and I had a gradual decline. And when did I hit zero? Well, I hit zero somewhere between 1.42 and 1.43 seconds. Now, depending on how accurate we wish to be, we could have made this 0.001 or 0.0001 or 0.00001. But for now, I'm happy with having this small error that's associated with this right here. Now, this also means that any of these data points here, after, say, 1.43 seconds, I have to remove, okay? So what I'm going to do is notice that I said this was a simulation. Now I'm going to add constraints to my simulation. And I am going to, again, I'm just gonna copy all these rows right here because I'm gonna use all these identical headers. And I'm going to now use an if-then command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a logical value here. And I'm going to say that if my y position here is greater than 0, then my time here is going to be equal to my time here. And if it's false, then I'm going to just say that it's going to be blank. Okay, and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag all the way down to the bottom. And you'll notice any place that I have highlighted here in red, I have a blank space right here. Okay, so we now we have only the time that we're concerned ourselves with. So now we can repeat that process here for all of our other values. Okay, let me show you a neat little trick. If I come up here and I, in front of this J here, I just add one dollar sign. So all I'm going to do is pin the row. I'm sorry, all I'm going to do is pin the column and not the row. And let's drag that all the way down, even though I don't think it's really necessary to do so. 
Now, what happens if I drag this across? Well, now, right here, if you notice, it, now I've still pinned to J3. So I'm still saying if J3 is less than 0, but now, instead of D3, I have E3, which is my acceleration in the X. Now, that saves me a time where I don't have to retype that whole formula in. And I bring that down, and we see that that will end up essentially doing the same thing for us here and cutting our simulation off when we need it to be. Okay, so I can actually drag that all the way across. And now I don't have to worry about constantly retyping that formula over and over and over again. I might want to verify it and just check to make sure it's okay. All right, so again, now I'm looking at, yes, that is my velocity in the x direction. And I can look that, yes, that's going to end up being my acceleration in the y. And then I can highlight all of these. And then I can just, again, scroll down just to make sure that my simulations cut off when I need them to cut off, which is all good. Now that that's complete, I can go ahead and I can start creating graphs. Now I'm not going to show you how to do every single graph because we've covered how to do graphs in previous videos. But let's just go ahead and let's just graph our x position versus our y position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my x position. And I'm going to highlight my y position. And then I'll go to insert and I'm going to do a scatter with smooth lines, and I'm going to create my plot. Okay, and again, I like to move this over to its own sheet. I hate this font, so I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna change my font to my prefer preferred font. And I'm gonna increase the size of that font. And then remember, we have to add our elements. So I'm going to add my axis title. Primary horizontal is going to be the x position in meters. And then add my element of my axis title in the primary vertical. And that's going to be my y position in meters. And I can change my title here to be X position versus Y position. Actually, that should be the other way around. That should be Y position versus the X position. And you can see that our simulation started with a height of 10 meters and land it when we hit the water and then we start it with an x position of zero and then we land it when we hit the water a little over eight about eight and a half meters when we hit the water okay and that's how you can do a simulation like this in excel